All right, welcome into Atlanta and the Super Bowl. This is Riders Block brought to you by the U.S. Marines. We are live. We got a great show, great week of shows planned for you. Bryant McFadden, the two time Super Bowl champion. Eric Decker is going to be on the show, both those gentlemen today, and a lot more beginning from Radio Row right now. We got time to break down the game, the offensive and defensive gamesmanship that's going to happen between McVay and Belichick, the key players, the legacies. But today we just want to step back and just enjoy that finally the Super Bowl is here. You can kind of see behind me the calm before the storm. We are in the midst here at CBS Sports HQ of what will be the madness at Radio Row in the coming days. Tonight is the official kickoff of the circus that is Super Bowl, in this case 53, beginning with Media Night, which by the way, we've got you covered on every step of the way. A great Media Night show planned for you right here on the network, CBS Sports HQ, every single moment. And it made us kind of think about over the past few years, some of the moments we've th seen, some of the things that have happened that we're hoping will recreate themselves in a Rams Patriots way tonight because Super Bowl is a party until the game and the party and the game kind of meet each other in the weirdness that is often media night slash back in the day, media day, including Marshawn Lynch back in that Seahawks Super Bowl, just being overwhelmingly excited to be a part of the event and so loquacious. I'm just here so I won't get fined. I'm just here so I won't get fined. Hey, I'm here so I won't get fined, boss. Hey, you better make more with your time. You only got three more minutes. I'm just here so I won't get fined. Something tells me he was just there so he wouldn't get fined. We hope that's a little different today. We like guys. We like guys answering questions. We want some insights into what the Rams and the Patriots are feeling about the big moment. We even want to see, you know, the other skill sets that some of these Renaissance men have. Don't forget Gronk. And he's going to be a huge factor potentially on Sunday. But don't forget that we learned that Rob Gronkowski sure can sing at one of these events. Hi, I'll do those two. Okay, how about this one? Girl, I like it. Yes. Hey, there you go. Oh, That's all I knew. Hi, I'll do the Gronk. You're going to hear me. That wasn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> Gronk is the man. And, uh, of course, love can spring up in the most unlikely of places. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Media night is about the reporters and the journalists and the questions and the hard-hitting journalism. But sometimes true love, and Tom Brady knows what I'm talking about, just has to find a way. The woman in the wedding Brady, dress. I'm in love with you. Are you really? Will you marry me, please? Wow. Marry I've me, please. I've never had Brady. a proposal. Inez, please, Brady. What's your name first? Hi, Inez. 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 It's a beautiful name, Inez. Marry me. What? I'm the real Miss Brady. <laughs> I got a few Miss Brady's in my life. I could be one of them. You could be? Yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a one woman man. <laughs> there will be plenty of whatever version of what you just saw plays itself out on Media Night on CBS Sports HQ tonight. And we'll also start, hopefully, not everybody goes full Marshawn Lynch. We'll start to get some insights into the game plans that are materializing, the state of mind of some of the critical figures. We will have you covered live. We'll have you covered the rest of the week here on CBS Sports HQ. And, of course, on this show, Riders Block. Remember, this is a storyline, a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 53, on CBS, largely about the past that won't give up the Patriots dynasty and a future dynasty that has to actually emerge before we can call it that in the Rams. The young coach versus the old coach, the old QB versus the young QB will literally be on display and under the microscope tonight at media night. We've got a great show planned for you today to kind of get you ready. Eric Decker played in the Super Bowl, longtime receiver, was actually with the Patriots earlier in the season before he retired. He's up in just a moment. My colleague Bryant McFadden going to be here on the program. Not a one, but a two-time Super Bowl champion. We're going to give you some perspective. You, the fan, from the view of the guys who have played in this event before. Eric Decker's kiss things off on Riders Block, brought to you by the U.S. Marines in just a moment here on the show.
All right, welcome into the show. You see me just staring at the camera because I'm so excited to be back here. Radio Row Atlanta, kind of the calm before the storm and thrilled to be joined right now from New York City. So we kind of traded places. Eric Decker, longtime wide receiver, joined us on behalf of our friends at Horizon Organic Protein Milk. I actually buy that for my children. Eric, thanks for, uh, thanks for making time, man. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on. All right, you've got some unique insights on this Patriots team. You played against them a lot of times in your career, and you actually signed with them this past summer before retiring. That combination of an insider's look and an opponent's look, what is it that makes this organization so ridiculously consistent and great? Well, I think it starts at the top. You know, they got a great owner, Mr. Kraft. Uh, Bill Belichick will go down as probably the greatest coach in the NFL, in my opinion. Uh, Tom Brady... I mean, at the helm, you're going to win a lot of ball games. But just that combination, you know, and spending time in the locker room, uh, sitting in meetings. I mean, I think I digested and learned more football in that short time, two weeks, than uh, most of my career. And then just the guys in the locker room, you know, they understand uh, what their job is, what their role is. Um, they got a great system that they do over there. And the way they train, I mean, they – they, they get themselves physically and mentally in shape to last this long. That's that's why they're in this big game. And we talk about the Patriots way all the time with awe. And for almost all of us, we talk about it with an outsider's perspective. You got that glimpse inside. You gave us a little perspective just now on, on what that looked like, what that felt like. Was it as palpable as people w would expect? Does it feel different when you're a Patriot with that culture than other places you've played? Yeah, I mean, I've been on, uh, you know, my fair share of teams, and I know what a winning organization looks like and what a losing organization looks like. And when I was in Denver those last couple of years with Peyton, I mean, it, it was the same as what it was like in New England. I mean, you could tell that the discipline is unlike anything. Um, if you're not going to, you know, do it the Patriots way, you're not going to be in that building. That's just that's the m mindset. And everyone understands their role. Everyone knows uh, what expectations are. And it, it's, it's the little things, the details that matter. So the preparation throughout the week, um, you know, not making the same mistakes over and over, uh, respecting one another, uh, and, you know, kind of understanding what it is that's going to get you to the long haul. It's not winning, you know, in September or October. It's conditioning yourself to win in December, in January, and get yourself to the big game. And that's, that's why uh, they separate themselves from a lot of teams because – uh, they've consistently done it, you know, and they've had the right people in place. Eric, you reference the Broncos. You, you played in the Super Bowl. You know what this week is like. Let's just start with, you know, today is media night, and we'll have coverage here on CBS Sports HQ the whole way, including a live media night show, and it just becomes a bit of a zoo. If you were talking to Sean McVay, that organization, some of those players, guys that have never played in this game before, what would your advice be about just trying to stay as focused as you can with the circus swirling around you? Well, I think, you know, as most athletes are, you got to find that routine. And you have a weekly routine throughout the season, what makes you comfortable, what gets you prepared for the Wednesday through Friday practices, how you get ready for the weekend game. And, and I think trying to simulate that uh, in a different environment, uh, it is harder when you're in a hotel, you're practicing in a different facility, Everything's a little bit different, but, you know, if, if you can try to do things the same way, uh, it makes the week not seem as chaotic, like you said, because you got to go and talk to more media throughout the week than you ever have. Uh, you got to do and be obligated to do different things outside of your normal responsibilities as a football player. Um, and just, you know, the heightened hype uh, attraction to the game is another thing to handle. So I think. For me, it was you know trying to make the week as consistent and similar to what it was like for us at home. And when you do step on that football field, and it is a Super Bowl, and all of that is behind you, and the most important football game of your life is in front of you, how does the game feel differently, and how long, at least in your experience, until it felt like just another game between the lines? I think once kickoff happened, it, you know, it started just to feel like another game because you got the butterflies out, the prolonged introductions and pregame stuff. And then, you know, the biggest difference as well is the halftime. You're in the locker room a little bit longer. So trying to occupy yourself mentally uh, to, to really stay in it, you know, and, and keep yourself loose for the second half. 
But otherwise, once you're in between the lines, I mean, it's just another football game and trying to do your best to, to put, on, put up some points. All right, Eric, this next question is, is easier said than done. If you could bottle up the answer, you could make a fortune. But I'm going to ask you, it, for, for the Rams, what does a successful game plan against this Patriots team look like? They got to play their style of football. You know, um, you saw it when they're in New Orleans and the crowd noise was a factor. Um, if you can slow L.A. down, I think you have a very good chance against them um, and stop the running game. But if, if they're playing at their pace, getting to the line, uh, really making their calls and their checks, um, that's, that's when they play their best football. And so both teams can put up a lot of points. Both teams have... You know, good defenses, good good fronts. So I, I think it's controlling the line of scrimmage, you know, and, and probably for L.A. because they have younger players and Goff at, at the helm, running the ball, get them comfortable, and then just, you know, playing their style of football, which I think is at the line a little more fast-paced. You know, we live in an era of quarterbacks, whether it's Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, most would agree, the greatest of all time. Sean McVay celebrated for a lot of reasons, including his ability to be really creative with the passing game. But there's some running backs and some running games here that could be really critical. Todd Gurley, C.J. Anderson for the yeah. Rams, and Sony Michelle's been incredible as a rookie in the postseason. How much do you think the run game should and, and will impact what happens on Sunday? I think it's going to be a big factor. You know, you saw New England throughout the season. They rely on their running backs, uh, and Sony came on there at the end and really, you know, uh, started to take charge. Um, they got White, who catches the ball in the backfield better than anybody. Um, and then, you know, L.A.'s got two, two running backs that went over for you know, 200 yards last game. So I think you're going to see both teams try to establish the run, figure out, you know, what they're doing defensively because it's, it's a longer uh, gap between game and game. So the game plans are more extensive. They might throw some new things at you. Uh, so I feel like that's a good way, again, to establish the game and figure out where each team is, kind of like a chess match. All right, before I ask you about Horizon Milk, it's, it's the uh, required and difficult-to-answer prediction question, especially this particular – I think this game is a – it is a tough one. It feels like the handicap. But who – your best guess, Eric Decker, who do you think comes out on top on Sunday? You're right. That's a tough question to answer. Uh, but I feel that it's an evenly matched. I want a, I want a good entertainment game. You know, I want some points scored. I want it to be close. Uh, I will say, though, being more invested with New England, being in the locker room, getting all the guys personally in around them, I'm, I'm rooting for them. Uh, I will say, though, I think it's going to be in the 30s, a uh, high-scoring game. New England pulls it out. All right, so behind you is a look into my fridge. I got two kids. My wife searched and hunted milk like she was on a on an epic quest. And we, we I'm, This is true. <laughs> we settled on Horizon Tell us, I swear I, that is an absolute truism. What? Uh, tell us about what you're doing with, with Horizon. That's good. I love that. Uh, you know, I partnered up with Horizon, and it's very kind of organic uh, partnership for me because I grew up in Minnesota, uh, and my family were farmers. I used to go to my grandpa's house in the summer, my uncle's house, and, and you know, feed the cows, milk the cows, and, you know, we'd be drinking right from the cow itself. So I'm the same way you are. Health is a big thing in our household, my wife. Uh, is all about getting the right ingredients, the right uh, things in, in our kids' bodies. So um, Horizon just came out with a new high-protein organic milk, and it's, it's delicious. And it's, it's a way for us to sneak in the protein in their diet. Um, and, you know, 27 years in the business, they pioneered in the organic space. Uh, so I, I, I know I trust them and their product. And so ultimately, it just felt like the right fit to be here uh, promoting the product. Eric Decker, I really enjoyed the conversation. I know it's getting cold up in the mid part of the country in New York. Uh, try to stay warm. Thanks for uh, thanks for your time. Thanks, Bill. All right, that was great, Eric Decker. Some perspective. I love that man. Guys, have been in the Super Bowl, even if you haven't won at the top of that mountain, it gives us some insight into what the Rams and the Patriots are going through. And we're going to get more of that insight from two-time Super Bowl champion, my colleague here at CBS Sports HQ, Bryant McFadden, joins me from Atlanta, side of Super Bowl 53 on CBS, in just a moment on Riders Block, brought to you by the U.S. Marines. All 
All right, welcome back into Atlanta. Media day is tonight. Media night is tonight. We're at Radio Row. I'm Bill Ryder. Riders Block brought to you by the U.S. Marines. Joined by not one, but two-time Super Bowl champion and my colleague here at CBS Sports HQ, Bryant McFadden. Brian, you got that ring? Is yes, sir. Yes, I? sir. All right. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. I t you let me you let me uh, hang on to it earlier, yeah. which I appreciate because I had, before the only one that I'd ever touched was the Green Bay Packers ring, which is a Bears fan. Yeah, which is a no-no, first hard, and foremost, right? Bill. Is it hard, equally hard for you to have to say nice things about the Patriots as you go through this week, or have they earned that since obviously they're, they're here again? Well, you have to respect what the Patriots have been able to do, um, granted, as an former AFC player playing with the Steelers, you know, having issues, games against the Pats. You don't want to root for them, but you respect what they've been able to do being so consistent, Bill. Uh, we may never see a run like this ever as far as organizational standpoint and player coach standpoint with Tom, with uh, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. All right, so we know, I think we can expect that the Patriots are going to know how to go about their business. They've been here before. They've seen this. They've done that. Different situation for the Rams, head coach, the quarterback, a lot of the guys in the team. You played in three, you won two, you came from an organization with a remarkable culture. Yeah. What are the pit, the real pitfalls that the Rams need to avoid this week as they get ready for this game? Well, not allowing the week of to define their game. Usually and sometimes it's hard for players not to get caught up in the distractions. You know, being able to be out and about, enjoying the sights and the sounds, the festivities they will have available for for you because you're participating in the game but most importantly you must remember the reason why you're there the this is the biggest most important business trip of your career which is getting to the Super Bowl so understand and knowing it's okay to enjoy yourself but do not allow the week of enjoyment define what happens on Sunday did you like media night slash media day I mean were you a fan of the wackiness the proposals the in fact, we got a photo. It's pretty amazing. And I'm oh, trying to you. figure out where you found this photo you ready? right, All right Bill, well, but... Producer Bryce <laughs> dug up this photo. I see you, Bryce. Of you really <laughs> taking in. Yes. The mo That's amazing. That's media, media day at that time, of course, to see the sunlight. <laughs> right. It wasn't a prime time event. Uh, I think that was entertainment tonight. We had a dance off. And, you know, I will, I've been always known to, to cut a nice little roll. You got some moves? Yeah, my rhythm is up. Dated. It's on point. You know, I'm very, very smooth. And as you see, uh, they had a dancer there, and me and her decided to have our own uh, dancing with the stars, to say the least. And I was able to uh, come up, come away with the trophy. And I still have that trophy uh, from Entertainment Tonight. I still have that trophy. Is it in a place to honor in your home? I mean, you know, where is it hanging out somewhere where you can like show it to the guests? Be like, oh yeah. I'm afraid to tell you where the trophy is, Bill. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna do personal. All right, here's a here's a serious question. It's so, in my bathroom. You won two, you lost one. What's the higher emotion? Is, is the joy of winning or, or, or the pain of losing the, the thing that's stronger? The pain of losing. And for me, I guess I feel that way because my first two trips, I never lost. Didn't know what it felt like to lose. And then the third trip, when we finally lost, it was like, you know, a storm coming, a, a difficult storm you couldn't get rid of. And I didn't know how to adjust or get over that hurdle. So the losing the third Super Bowl was probably one of the most devastating things I faced in my career as far as team aspect, being together as a team and losing. Because like I said, the first two, we never faced losing Super Bowls. We always won one. So we're in an era now of numbers and saber metrics and analytics. And one of the consequences is some of the people who sit in my chair, the, the reporters who didn't play the game at a high level, consider you guys numbers on a page and equations. But there's a human side to this thing. Yep. How much different, whether it's nerves or excitement, whatever, does the first Super Bowl feel? And how do you have to adjust if you're a Ram or a young guy? Sonny Michelle certainly qualifies to make sure you're doing the right things and not getting swept up in that moment. Well, the best way for me to explain this to the, the viewers that are watching us, Bill, and also to you, at some point in time in our lifetime, we've experienced getting on a roller coaster. And that's safe to say, maybe not the entire human race, but for the most part, the majority of us gotten, have gotten on a roller coaster. And the first roller coaster, just imagine going on one of the biggest roller coasters you've ever seen. The first time you get on that roller coaster, you don't know exactly how to handle the climb or the drops or the turns. So you're extremely scared because it's the first time. But if you were able to get on that same roller coaster, weeks from your first initial ride, 
Now you know how to embrace some of the drops, some of the turns, some of the, 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 the climbs. That's the same thing with Super Bowl experience. The first game, you don't know how to handle the adrenaline, going through the national anthem going through the extended halftime period. And now you can become a bit restless or impatient, or you might press things that you usually don't press as far as trying to make things happen. The second go around, now you know how to handle it. So that's the best way I can explain from individuals that never been a part of a Super Bowl roller coaster. Remember your first roller coaster? Ha, ah, I'm afraid. The second time, oh, I know when I'm going up, I know when I'm going down. It's still a bit scary, but I know how to handle the conditions. You know, all right, so it sounds like we got to sign off here, but it sounds like advantage. I'm not going to do a prediction today because we got a few days, but yeah. prediction, advantage Patriots, at least in that respect. You would think so, but of course we saw a team that did not have the experience a year ago in the Philadelphia Eagles that found a way to win that ball game. But the difference between the Philadelphia Eagles a year ago compared to the Los Angeles Rams this year, last year the Eagles had no pressure. They were supposed to lose because they had a backup quarterback filling in for their franchise starter. So if they lost, guess what? We all would have said they were supposed to lose. So when you walk into that element with no pressure, you're extremely relaxed. The Rams, they were supposed to be here. We feel like this was the year for them to get to a championship. Now they're here, but they have no experience, more so compared to the, law, uh, to, to the New England Patriots. So most importantly for the Rams, they have to embrace the moment. But like I said earlier, do not allow the moment to define their outing Sunday. We saw a slow start from the Rams a week ago against the Saints. They can't afford to have a slow start against the Pats when you're playing against Tom Brady. But most importantly, the first kickoff experience kind, kind of goes down the drain. All right, we're going to – this is just the beginning – of the insight we're going to get here on CBS Sports HQ on Writer's Block, your home for every single moment of coverage you want at Super Bowl 53, streaming on CBSSports.com. And remember, remember, we got you covered media night tonight on CBS Sports HQ. I'll see you back in Writer's Block tomorrow. Thanks for being here.